Hi guys, this is today's lesson. We are doing two things today. We're gonna to talk about genre, which is up here, and we're gonna talk about Greek and Latin roots. So let's start with genre, and we're gonna use this passage that you listened to um, yesterday, and then we're gonna li uh, listen to and analyze the new passage for today and pick out key features that make it a biography. So. Rocketing into space is a biography, but what is a biography? A biography tells the true story of a real person's life. It's written, written by another person and it usually has text features that give us a clue that this is a biography and that it's nonfiction. Some of those text features are keywords and they're usually bold, that means dark like this word, keywords. There are usually photographs and captions. So let's take a look at rocketing into space and look for some features that make it biography. All right, so here we are on page um, 435, I believe, in your textbook. Um, it says identify features that tell you that rocketing into space is a biography. And we're gonna use this think aloud to kind of look at some features. But what do you see? Things that we already know that make it nonfiction. Yes, I see photo, a photograph and I'm behind this word box. I know there's an image or photograph of the person we are learning about. There is definitely a caption here. And there's one more, actually a few more things. Um, yes, there is a heading and I see some bold keywords. So let's see. It says, a biography is a true story of a person's life written by another person. So I know um, James Lovell did not write this story about himself because then we would see a lot of I, my, me words. This was written about him, but someone else wrote it. I know this because I see words like his, he. So those are some keywords that tell me that someone else wrote about him. And let's look at some more features. All right, so um, we're looking for keywords. Keywords are words that are usually dark. They're darker than the regular type. So some of our keywords are, are our vocabulary words, like specialist. It's bold, it's darker. And then there are some words that aren't part of our vocabulary, but they are, um, definitely keywords like this word challenges here. So let's take a look at another page before we move on to the passage you're gonna to listen to today. So we have a photograph here, another feature that makes it a biography, nonfiction with a caption included. Now let's practice. It says highlight another keyword from this page here. Keyword meaning a word in bold, dark type from this page and help me to type it. What do you see? Oh, I see this word lunar. So I'm gonna type lunar here. Lunar is a bold word and I know lunar means moon because there's a comma after it and it says the NASA team decided the astronauts would use the lunar or moon module as a lifeboat. So again, keywords are bold words, We've got a photograph with the caption here and then heading. So let's look at our passage for today and practice genre. All right, so here's your passage for today. It is titled Out of This World and it's about a real astronaut named the Ellen Ochoa story. Uh, I'm gonna play it and we're just gonna listen to and look for key features that make this a biography. So let's listen. Genre, biography, out of this world, the Ellen Ochoa story. Bi Essential question, why are goals important? Read about Ellen Ochoa, find out how she reached her goals. All right, so do you see any text features that make this a biography so far? Yes, I see a photograph. This photograph is a key feature for it being nonfiction and a biography. Now let's listen. 
How many people can say that their jobs are out of this world? Ellen Achoa, a cho a, can. She is the first female Hispanic American astronaut. Her job has taken her out of this world four times. Don't be afraid to reach for the stars. I believe a good education can take you anywhere on Earth and beyond. Ellen Achoa. Okay, so these words are directly from Ellen Ochoa. Now let's move on and look for more features. Reaching for the stars. Ellen Ochoa was born in California in 1958, the same year the space program began. Back then, only men became astronauts. This was a problem for women who wanted to go into space. Women were not allowed to even apply for the job. Luckily, the space program began accepting women in 1978. Sally Ride, the first female astronaut, went into space in 1983. In fact, it was Sally Ride's mission that gave Ellen Ochoa the idea of becoming an astronaut. When Ellen Ochoa began college, she thought she would be a professional musician, then changed her mind. When she went to Stanford University, she heard about the skills an astronaut required. She decided to try to join the astronaut program. Unfortunately, Ochoa was not chosen. She did not have the right skills. Most astronauts were men. She wasn't a military pilot like many astronauts. She wasn't athletic and strong. But Ellen wanted to go into space. She knew this was a problem she could solve. I can't imagine not wanting to go into space, Ochoa says. She did not give up her dream. Ellen Ochoa trained hard to become an astronaut. Young Ellen was a good math and science student. All right, so what are some text features you see on this page that make it a biography and nonfiction? Yes, there are photographs here and captions and keywords. Remember, keywords are those bold words. Sometimes they're highlighted because they are also your vocabulary. All right, so let's listen to another page before you work on your own. At Stanford, Ochoa studied subjects related to space. She did research for several inventions that helped solve problems in space. One of her inventions helped guide robotic arms for work in space. Robotic arms look like human arms. They have parts that move like a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist. They do jobs that are too hard or dangerous for people. Many tasks in outer space require astronauts to use robotic arms. Ochoa's experience with robotic arms helped her get into the astronaut program in 1991. Ochoa controlled the space shuttle's robotic arm. One of Ochoa's inventions helps guide robotic arms. All right, so I hope this helped. Um, make sure you log into McGraw-Hill and finish listening to this passage. And then you need to work on page 276 in your Your Turn practice book, your practice book page again. 276, you will read a passage and answer the questions. Now let's move on to Greek and Latin roots. All right, so let's take a look at uh, rocketing into space, but we're going to focus on Greek and Latin roots. And it says here, when you read an unfamiliar word in rocketing into space, you can look for Greek and Latin roots to help you figure out the word's meaning. What are some examples of Greek and Latin roots? Well, let's take a look at a few examples. An example of the word with a Latin root is lunar. The root is luna, meaning moon. Okay, so do you see that luna in this word lunar, which means it's Spanish for moon. Next example, an example of a word with a Greek root is nautical. The root is not, meaning ship. All right, so let's practice. Here we have a word highlighted is a Greek root. It has, the word is astronomy, and we need to figure out what is the meaning of this word, astronomy. So it has a Greek root. So our Greek root is astro. It's here in blue. 
and astro in Greek is star. So what does astronomy mean? Astronomy means the study of stars. Okay, let's practice another. Here we have astronauts. Do you remember what astro means? All right, so we know that astro is star. So let me type that. Astro is star. But what about not? So astro not. is a star sailor, but we just call it a person that flies into space. Now let's move on to the next one. Here we have lunar. Do you remember what lunar means and what's the root, the root, uh, Latin root? So the Latin root, remember, was luna. And what does luna mean? Luna means moon. So what does lunar mean? Good, lunar also means moon. All right, so let me show you what you're gonna practice for McGraw-Hill and Greek roots. And then you need to work on page 277 in your practice book, 277. Okay, boys and girls, so here is the game or activity you're gonna practice with Greek and Latin roots. Don't worry if you're not 100% sure because we have the words on the left and the definitions on the right. And you're very smart and I know you can match these. So the first word is asterisk, astronomy, and astronaut. Now let's match. Uh, let's start with one you should know, astronaut. What does astronaut mean? Is it the study of outer space, a mark shaped like a star, or someone who explores outer space? That's right, it is someone who explores outer space. What about astronomy? Is it the study of outer space? Now remember, astro means star, or is it a mark shaped like a star? So astronomy is the study of outer space, and an asterisk is a mark shaped like a star. Now there are four levels here. Good job. So after you complete your first level, make sure you click next and move on to the next one. Okay, that is the activity for you today on McGraw-Hill. Make sure you listen to your passage, Out of This World, the Ellen Ochoa story. Work on genre and Greek and Latin roots. And I'll see you tomorrow.